Okay, this is the uh, burner motor. It's a combination blower and uh, pump drive. And I wanted to give you a few things. I've, I've kind of talked about these before, but I'm going to tear this one apart. First thing I wanted to do is go over a couple of little things right here. Okay, the rotation on this thing is clockwise, and that's OPE. Uh, I always uh, looked at that as open end, but that's what it is. It's If I'm looking at the back of the motor, the part of the motor you can see, it would be clockwise. Okay. Uh, that one's a 1 8 horsepower. Some of them are 1 6, some of them are 1 7. All of these smaller burners like this are going to be small motors. Okay, it gives you full load amps and on and on. 115 volts, continuous duty, blah, blah, blah. Uh, if you're replacing the motor, you do know, need to know what the rotation is or if the rotation uh, is reversible. Some of them are. And also, you want to know whether it's 17, 25, or 34, 50 RPM. Looking at the back of the motor, we have a manual reset. Look for this manual reset. Because that's going to tell you either the pump is locked up or the start switch on this motor has failed. Uh, oftentimes you'll reset that and it'll just hum. If you were to take a small hammer and hit the side of this thing, a lot of times it'll start. That's telling you the start switch is failing. It's going to stick again, so that's not a solution. But other thing I wanted to show you is there's one of the oilers right there the end of the motor and there's the other boiler if this thing stops because the bearings have gotten stiff you can oil it but there's a good chance the motors failed it usually damages the bearings okay I wanted to take this thing apart and we'll take a look inside okay there's what the motor looks like with the with the uh, blower wheel off and we're going to pull, a, pull it apart and we're going to look and see what the uh, start switch looks like. Okay, we've got this thing apart. Here's your rotor here. Of course, your stator's there. This is the start switch. Now, I'm going to show you how this thing's actuated. Okay, we call this a centrifugal switch because there's weights right here on either side of the shaft that will work against these springs and when the speed gets up to 75 percent of the uh, running speed of this motor this one's a 1725 I think when it gets up to 75 percent of speed it will move these weights out and move this thing down now I'm gonna just use a screwdriver to demonstrate that Now when these weights go out, you can see this ring goes down. And it kind of all of a sudden pops like that. That's how switches have to work anyway, but uh, kind of just pops out like that. Okay, let's take a look at the switch itself. Okay, here's the end bell with the switch in it. Kind of shows you what it looks like. I'll get a little closer on it here. Okay, I've taken this part. Maybe you can see it a little better, the action of it anyway. It would normally be down here like this with these closed, and the start winding would be engaged, and then it pops up. And you can see the condition of the switches in there. I'll probably pop those out, and you can take a look at them. Now you can see the switch in there. The contact switch doesn't look real good. Uh, they never do look really good, but uh, this one was actually working. Okay, that's maybe a little better view of the other set of contacts. There's nothing really wrong with these. They do look pitted, but they all do. So uh, that is the centrifugal switch used in mostly older oil furnaces. The newer ones don't use a centrifugal switch. Uh, they're a PSC motor. Uh, 
but a lot of them did and a lot of them that are failing now use this switch so that's what the inside of that thing looks like if you're just curious